Coming up on News Live at 6, the Interfraternity Council released a statement today following the suspension of two fraternities on campus. More on what they said and how they plan to control hazing. Plus, a local refugee food bank held its fourth annual Blessing Box to provide resources to immigrants and new Americans in central New York. Pounds of weight could be limiting the number of dogs per household. News Live at 6 starts right now. This is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. Welcome to News Live at 6, I'm Max Williams. And I'm Jake Morell. Thanks for joining us. Well, we begin tonight with developing coverage of the two fraternities on campus that were suspended within the last two weeks. The Interfraternity Council released a statement today following the suspension of Phi Psi and Psi U for alleged hazing. The council said that they oppose hazing in all forms and that it has no place in Greek life at SU. They also said they're working on creating new learning and engagement opportunities for members to prevent and know how to report hazing. The council said, quote, we are asking the leaders of all chapters to review their recruitment and new member process to ensure they are providing a safe and respectful experience, end quote. And here in Syracuse, the CNY Blessing Box held its fourth annual food distribution, serving local refugees and immigrants. Our Olivia Rodriguez reports. Despite the cold, a crowd gathered yesterday, less than 10 minutes from campus, and the atmosphere was nothing short of familial. But for the Blessing Box, this kind of experience is nothing new. And we want to embrace these people like family. CNY Blessing Box is a food distribution organization here in Syracuse. Founded by local refugee, Tai Shaw, the event aims to serve new Americans, refugee, and immigrant populations in upstate New York. I'm a refugee. I came here 40 some years ago. I see them, I understand where they're coming from, and I know they're hungry. But I was in a refugee camp, I know what it's like. Hunger knows no color. That's the message that CNY Blessing Box operates by. But a Blessing Box, like this one, is so much more than the food inside of it. It's a message of love, hope, and community. Community is the entirety of what Blessing Box is about. It's an operation that takes a village. That's where Jay comes in. Once standing in this ferry line, he's now a board member for the Blessing Box. I came as a refugee. I was same like these people. When I used to line up and get the food, now I'm able to donate. With a focus on cultural identity, Blessing Box is providing everything from halal to toiletries. And while the event has only grown since its inception, for Thai, it serves as a beacon of hope. You know, one person make a difference. So that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm, I'm trying to demonstrate to our new Americans just because we come here as a refugee, we don't have to continue to live a refugee. We have to empower ourselves, do something matter. Because on a cool fall day like today, a little warmth in community really can be, well, a blessing. Inspiring stuff, Olivia. Thank you. Well, with Halloween approaching, the Syracuse Police Department wants to ensure safety, especially while trick-or-treating. However, Department Chief jo Joseph Cecil believes that they're down about 50 to 60 officers. Cecil says that on Halloween, the department has marked and unmarked patrols to make sure trick-or-treaters stay safe and will have lights on for cars to drive slow. If the shortage gets worse, Cecil says the first thing that would go would be quality of life type services. Well, speaking of Halloween, my favorite type, type time of year, Jake, if trick-or-treating isn't your thing, which I don't really know why it wouldn't be, but the Matthews Audio Locations is hosting a trunk or treat this Wednesday evening. Each Matthews showroom has vehicles decorated by employees in Halloween spirit that are competing for best decorated trunk and best employee costume. That sounds like so much fun. Yeah, it does. The community is invited to stop by showrooms for free cider and donuts in various locations, including Syracuse and Clay. The free cider and donuts part that might sounds, get me. Yeah, that sounds really good. Well, hey, this is something we don't normally say in Syracuse, but get ready for summer weather this Halloween. Temperatures are expected to reach the upper 70s on the 31st. Our weather anchor, Isabel Galan, will have more on what to expect later in the week soon, but these temperatures is a cause for concern for pumpkins that are starting to rot. Yeah, and one way to keep them fresh is to move them to a cooler place, such as a basement, and you can also wipe the pumpkins down with one part water and one part vinegar solution to remove any bacteria that causes pumpkins to mold. When I was a kid, I really, I needed to be watching Live at Six in 2024 <laughs> when I was a child because I always was so angry. I probably threw a few fits as a four-year-old about a rotting pumpkin yeah. that I carved too early. <laughs> 
Have you carved a pumpkin yet this year? I have not carved a pumpkin okay. yet All right. this year. I, I, I really was, need to get on that. Yeah. I, I know I just made a whole deal about it. I <laughs> should probably do it now. Well, I, I was home over the weekend, Rhode Island, and uh, my mom made me carve a pumpkin. So that was. Would uh, you, did you jack o' lantern? Yeah, or yeah, you, yeah. yeah, classic jack o' lantern. Okay. It's like that's the way to go. There you go. There <laughs> you go. Well, let's uh, let's hope we might see some cooler temperatures and keep our pumpkins nice and safe outside on the porch. John, with more on that, <laughs> is Isabella Galan. Bella. Thanks guys. Yeah, if you're looking to carve some pumpkins, today is a perfect day to do that because we're not seeing too high of temperatures that we will be seeing later on, which I will have for you later in the show. Right now we're sitting at a comfortable 53 degrees with 52% cloud cover. So little clouds in the sky, but nothing too crazy. We will be seeing those clear up a little bit later on tonight. But right now for across the region, we're seeing uniform temperatures once again. However, this time they have dropped since the temperatures from last week. We're seeing a lot of 59 degrees, 57 degrees in most area, the warmest temperature being down south in Elmira. But other than that, we're sitting at that comfortable 57 to 59 degrees. And like I said, later on tonight, those clouds will be clearing up, which will lead for a beautiful night sky, 45 degrees for another beautiful night in Syracuse. Guys, back to you. Isabella, thank you. Looking forward to it. Well, Onondaga County voters are breaking the enrollment record for the second time in the past four years. More than 319,000 people have registered for the upcoming election this Saturday, uh, with this Saturday being the last day to register. Yeah, and this year's voter enrollment breaks the previous record in 2020 with nearly 310,000 county residents registered. Saturday also marked the first day of early voting. Nearly 20,000 people have voted in person and roughly 19,000 people have voted by mail in Onondaga County. And sticking with our election coverage, Governor Kathy Hochul and Attorney General Letitia James provided an update on nonpartisan efforts to protect voting rights and public safety across New York State during the election. They're working with multi-agency resources to fight against misinformation and respond to any barriers to voting. This continues Hochul and James's longstanding commitment to protecting the voting rights of all New Yorkers. Well, if you're a pet owner in the town of DeWitt or looking to get a pet, Listen up, the town, uh, the town is discussing a proposed law tonight that would lower the number of dog licenses allowed per residence. We go live to our reporter Tyler Aldana, who's outside the Witt Town Hall right now where that meeting is about to take place. Tyler, I understand that this is a concern for dog owners, but why are they even passing this law in the first place? That's right, Max. The number of dogs could be decreasing from, per household, excuse me, could be decreasing from five all the way down to three. We spoke to one council member who tells us why this change could be coming, and he says it comes down to three reasons. Safety, cleanliness, and of course, space. Because predominantly town of DeWitt lots are not that big. Our neighboring towns like Manlius and Pompey have bigger lots, but basically in the town of DeWitt, the smaller lots, is it three dogs we want, is it five dogs? So we really want to know from the people The town is looking to create more space for dogs by building a new dog park, the land of which has already been donated. But even with a new park planned out, the town of DeWitt is holding a public meeting tonight to discuss the state of the furry companions in this town. Right now, they're asking not only who let the dogs out, but how many they'll be allowed to keep. Reporting in the town of DeWitt, Tyler Aldano, Citrus TV News. Tyler, thank you. While gas prices continue to drop across the nation after an increase in prices from Hurricanes Helene and Milton, the current national price is at $3.13. Now that's 37 cents cheaper than last year. Drivers across New York State pay an average of $3.20 a gallon. Syracuse drivers are paying even more at $3.22 a gallon, yet that's down a penny since last Monday. The decline in prices comes from fast recovery from the areas impacted by the hurricanes and the conflict in the Middle East not impacting prices too intensely at the current moment. Well, thankfully those prices are going down. Well, another change coming to the city is speed cameras. Syracuse plans to install more than 200 yellow optic cameras on the streets. But a recent lawsuit in Alabama may challenge that. The suit says Yeno Optic improperly identifies drivers with their speed cameras. Mayor Ben Walsh is still going forth with the installment, saying it is a deterrent above all. A man was stabbed early Sunday morning during a fight on James Street. Officers say 15 people were involved in the fight outside of Amici's gathering place. Police found a 29-year-old man with a stab wound to his upper body from the fight at the scene. 
The man is in stable condition at Upstate University Hospital. Police ask anyone with information to reach out immediately. A Syracuse man is facing 15 years to a life sentence in prison for selling fentanyl, meth, cocaine, and guns across the Syracuse area. The Northern District of New York Court says 28-year-old old Ukawan Uka Lawrence admitted to four charges of possessing and distributing guns and drugs. Lawrence is a convicted felon and had over nine grams of assorted drugs as well as a shotgun when he was arrested. Prosecutors say Lawrence also pled guilty to charges of bringing guns from Maine to sell on the streets of Syracuse. Well, we're, the Game 3 of the World Series is tonight, and Governor Kathy Hochul warns New York baseball fans looking to purchase last-minute tickets to be aware of potential scams. Hochul is urging those looking to go to the game to follow the tips provided by the New York Department of State's Division of Consumer Protection leading up to the Yankees versus Dodgers home games at Yankee Stadium. They say to make sure to verify the seller, but only from trusted sources, and be aware of abnormally low prices. Coming up on News Live at 6, how people are responding after the comments made at Donald Trump's rally by comedian Tony Hinchcliffe. And more details on the lawsuit surrounding Elon Musk and his political action committee. All that and more after these messages. Stay with us. You're watching Citrus TV News live at 6 with Jake Morrell, Max Williams, and Isabella Galan. Now, your campus news leader continues. Welcome back into News Live at 6. Jake Morrell alongside Max Williams. Former President Trump held a presidential rally in New York City yesterday, and one of the speakers is receiving criticism for his comments. Comedian Tony Hinchcliffe made offensive jokes about migrants, Latino citizens, and the Puerto Rican territory. A part of this speech has been circulating around social media. Take a look. You know, there's a lot going on. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah, I think it's called Puerto Rico. And while Puerto Ricans are American citizens, they do not have representation in Congress and don't have the right to vote for president. But many Latin voters are critical of the Trump campaign. SU sophomore Camila Santiago says that she thinks this incident can sway voters in the Latin community. some technical difficulties there. Well, the Trump campaign spokesperson said that Hinchcliffe's comments do not reflect the views of the Trump campaign. President Biden and Tim Walz both responded to the joke, where Biden said the comments were embarrassing and beneath presidential character. 
Hinchcliffe responded to Governor Walsh saying, quote, I love Puerto Rico and vacation there. I made fun of everyone and watched the whole set. I'm a comedian, Tim. Might be time to change your tampon, end quote. Vice President Harris currently holds a 12-point lead in a vital Nebraska congressional district. A new poll from the New York Times shows Harris leads former President Trump 54% to his 42% in the Omaha district. Nebraska is one of the only states to not have a winner-take-all approach in the presidential election. And the Philadelphia district attorney is filing a lawsuit against Elon Musk over his pro-Trump political action committee. Musk announced he is giving $1 million dollars to a random signer of his petition that showed support for the First and Second Amendment as well as former President Trump. And the suit says that Musk and his PAC were running an illegal lottery scheme in Pennsylvania. Federal law says that anyone who pays or accepts payment for voting is subject to a $10,000 fine or even a five-year prison sentence. And Volkswagen is planning to close three production plants at its home market of Germany. The car giant was slow to invest in electric vehicles and has struggled to catch up with Tesla and other EV companies. Yeah, Volkswagen also plans to downside all of its remaining factories. These closures could result in the loss of tens of thousands of jobs. The company also canceled a 1994 agreement last month that would have protected its workers from layoffs into 2029. Now business-related layoffs will be allowed in mid-2025. And the death toll in the Israel-Hamas war has now hit more than 43,000 people. The rising death toll comes as Israel continues its offensive on Gaza's north. The Palestinian Health Ministry's count does not differ from combatants and civilians, but more than half that are dead are women and children. Yeah, Israel has raided hospitals in the Gaza area over the course of the war, saying that Hamas is using it for military purposes and blending in with medical staff. Israel has arrested 100 suspected Hamas combatants in the latest hospital raid. Day forecast. Stay with us. Jason, let's go see your room. What do you think? We kept it a little spare so you can decorate it how you like. Norm. He lives with anxiety, but with the help of this latest innovation from Be Normal, he can be normal, just like everyone else. With the swipe of a finger, you can project happiness, confidence, machismo. Why settle for being real when you can be normal? The Normal Maker, new from Be Normal. This item doesn't really work because there's no such thing as normal. We're all different. What we like, how our brains work. In fact, one in five of us live with mental illness. Don't filter who you are. Start by talking to someone you trust. And remember, there is no normal. In the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. Welcome back into News Live at 6. Looking ahead to your five-day forecast, tomorrow is the only day that we're really going to be seeing some rain, and that's only going to happen a little bit later in the day. And temperatures are going to be warming up to Halloween. I know that's really the only day that people are really caring about the weather. It's going to get up to record-breaking, almost 80 degrees as the highest temperature. So make sure to plan your costumes accordingly. And speaking of Halloween costumes, I wanted to highlight one of my favorites, but actually, instead of high temperatures, this was a record-breaking snowy Halloween that I had when I was in elementary school and I was a snow princess, so I think that it was my fault that we did have some snow. But I also got some more costume ideas for you just in case. Now, if you are really thinking about what to do, an easy one to do is a cowboy. You can just throw on a cowboy hat, a quick leather jacket, pretty sure most people have that. Here's a great example. Another example is Cat in the Hat, another easy one. I've been seeing a lot of people doing it. Just throw on some whiskers, wear all black, and get a hat if you want to be fancy. An easy costume. 
Next, I have to show off my makeup skills here. Zombies, you can wear any clothes you want. Just throw on some crazy face makeup and you got it down pat. And last but not least, this was me in middle school. I had a cow onesie and I was like, you know what? If I just throw on this sign that I made, boom, Chick-fil-A cow right there for you. So those are some costume ideas in case you haven't had yours yet and need something to wear for this weekend. But that's all for me right now. I'll see you guys later in the show. Hey, thanks for the ideas, Isabella. Well, from Halloween costumes to clowns, McDonald's is now reporting that there is no E. coli detected in their beef patties used in their quarter pounders. The patties have been ruled out as the source of the outbreak, and are now, it is now predicted that the slivered onion may have caused the contamination. McDonald's stopped <laughs> sourcing its onions, excuse me, from Taylor Farms in Colorado Springs indefinitely on Sunday. Taylor Farms onions were sold in stores in Colorado, Kansas, and Wyoming. No other burgers or McDonald's items were affected by the outbreak. Well, good news there. Timothy Chalamet made a surprise appearance at his own lookalike competition in Manhattan this weekend. Never heard of that before. The event attracted hundreds of people, resulting in the dispersal order from police. The organizers were also issued a $500 fine for hosting an unpermitted costume contest. At least one contestant was arrested with charges still pending. Well, that's crazy. I feel, wow, like, that's I feel awesome. like that's a little harsh. When I was down there a few weeks ago, I saw that sign. I was like, wow, they're really going to find the Lee San El Gai. It's like <laughs> Dune in real life. Yes. They're trying to find him. I, I loved it. I thought that was awesome. What a guy. Just showing up to your own lookalike contest. I already took second, too. Really? Yeah, they like gave the first prize to someone else. I think <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I, I think that's that. so funny. Well, speaking of the competition, uh, we've got sports coming up for you. Grace, what do we got? We have an early look at this year's Syracuse men's basketball squad in their exhibition opener on Saturday. All that and more coming up next on Sports. Women are bad with money. That's what the world's been saying for centuries. But now, we've got something to say. Save it. Save the old-fashioned advice. The empty excuses. It's all worthless. Unlike us. To our fellow females, it is time to save ourselves by saving our money contributing to our futures, investing in our independence. Until we're no longer 80%, 80%, 80% more likely than men to live in poverty in retirement. So again, we say to that, save it. The falsehoods, the feelings of fault. Then the funds. Learn how to save for your retirement at wesaysaveit.org. And now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. Basketball is back in the 315. Welcome to Sports, everyone. I'm Grace Piacco. The Syracuse men's basketball team had their first exhibition game of the season against Clarion on Saturday. Let's take a look at how the game went down. In the opening minutes of the game, Colorado transfer Eddie Lampkin elevates for a powerful slam dunk. Later, he finds Pitar Masatovic on the backdoor cut for an easy basket. In the second half, Syracuse extends their lead into double digits as Hofstra transfer Jaquan Carlos gets an easy three-pointer. With minutes left on the clock, Kyle Cuff Jr. delivers a stunning block to seal the deliver the defensive effort. Syracuse claims a victory with a decisive 101-73 win victory. Now to women's basketball, they will host Damon University tomorrow night in an exhibition game, providing a first look at the Orange roster this season. 
Damon a Division II school from the East Coast Conference finished last year with a 23-8 and record, making it into the NCAA Division II Elite Eight. This will be the first ever matchup between the two teams. The Orange will be adjusting without last season star Deja Fair, which Georgia Woolley expected to take a leading role. Woolley and the three other captains, Sophia Burrows, Kyra Wood, and newcomer Andrew Elica Velez will lead the charge. The tip-off is tomorrow at 7 p.m. in the JMA Wireless Dome. In a thrilling matchup yesterday, the 11th-ranked Syracuse field hockey team rallied to secure a 3-1 victory over 8th-ranked UConn, marking their first top-10 win of the season and their fifth top-20 win overall. After a scoreless first half, Syracuse struck in the third quarter, scoring all three goals in quick succession. UConn managed to get on the board late, but it wasn't enough to overcome Syracuse's lead. Up next, Syracuse will host Boston College for their final regular season game on November 1st, which is also Senior Day. The action starts at 4 p.m. on ACC Network Extra. The Buffalo Bills headed west yesterday to take on the Seattle Seahawks. The Bills started strong and established an early momentum despite Josh Allen's first interception of the season in the second quarter. He bounced back to post 283 yards and two touchdowns. The Bills ground game also dominated as James Cook racked up 111 rushing yards and two touchdowns. Now holding a four-game lead in the AFC East, the Bills will host Miami Dolphins Sunday at 1 p.m. on CBS. Tonight is Game 3 of the World Series with the Los Angeles Dodgers leading seri the series 2-0 against the New York Yankees. The Yankees will host the next three games looking to turn the series around. Sho Shohei Otani suffered a partially dislocated left shoulder attempting to steal second base, but he is expected to play tonight. Yankee star Aaron, Aaron Judge has struggled so far with just one hit and nine at-bats and six strikeouts. The game starts at 8.08 p.m. on Fox. All right, excited for that. Hopefully the Yankees get a win. All right, when we come back, we'll have one last look at your wake-up weather. Stay with us. Welcome to my house. Lately, not my happy place. Everybody's pretty tired of each other. The parents were not themselves. My little brothers were morphing into small creatures. The walls were closing in. Clearly a case of too much family, too close, 24-7. And there's a lot of that going around right now. If this sounds like your house, try going someplace new. Yourlifeyourvoice.org You'll find lots of ideas to help you handle the family stresses of being confined to close quarters. Yourlifeyourvoice.org It might not get you out of the house, but it could help you find a little more breathing room. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back. When you wake up tomorrow morning, you can expect a nice 55 degrees and that sun will be coming up at around 7.36 in the morning. Amazing. I love all this warm weather. All right, well, let's take a look back at our favorite costumes from this Halloween. This going to be a fun one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> there we go. All right. Oh, that is oh. Nice. <laughs> wow. I was I Anchorman it. two years ago. Classic. Wow. Kind of ironic because now I'm on the desk here at Citrus, but... Uh, it's yeah, it was a fun costume. The tie didn't really. Uh, it's a self fulfilling <laughs> prophecy. I mean, on you know, Halloween, you're in college. The tie's kind of supposed yeah. to be. Yeah. I mean, I love like the that. mustache, but like, it gets so, like, itchy. Like, yeah, yeah. You don't want to. Oh, there's well. <laughs> Yup, that's me. Um, I was a competitive dancer, so I used to reuse a lot of my dance costumes for Halloween. So this is Kermit the Frog. Nice. Kermit the Frog. Nice. Very, love very classic. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Oh, that's so cute. Monster High. Yeah, Monster High. That was like eight years old, maybe. Oh, oh I love it. The wig is so good. The wig yeah. is great. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, so I was a big Star Wars fan growing up, uh, <laughs> and, and I have two older brothers, so they would be Jedi and I would be Yoda. Uh, and I really, really went back and forth with doing a Yoda impression on air, but I decided oh. I would, would save the viewer's ears from that. <laughs> so I'm not going to hit a Yoda impression. 
Uh, but I'm excited for Halloween this year. Yeah, I mean, yeah. as, as Bella told us, it's going to be pretty warm, but I'm still going to yeah. go trick-or-treating. Oh, yeah. Unless I'm too old for that. <laughs> no, <laughs> never. never. Well, uh, that's all the time we have for you on News Live at 6 for this Monday. Don't forget, you can follow us on X and Instagram at Citrus TV News. Now, for the entire Citrus TV News team, I'm Max Williams. And I'm Jake Morrell. Have a great night, Syracuse. Thank you.